um, that's for today. Um, we have an office uh, over uh, on the other side. So if you have a question, ask. We try to, to have uh, at any time one in this room. So um, I think I have all. OK, today we have a barbecue. And uh, that's for today. So um, that was the organization thing. So um, I think I have forgotten anything, but not a problem. So um, I, I played you that, that I will talk a little bit about the history of this event. So, and um, actually, it was in, in 2006, uh, and it was a German Joomla day. And uh, we had some people from from, the, uh, from Dutch and from Belgium, and and uh, so I, I think why not make it a little bit more international? So I looked a little bit around uh, what we can do in Germany. I found a, a nice location in Cologne. I made, uh, I, I made a short presentation and drive with this presentation to the Dutch Joomla Day. So and. That was the first slide from the presentation, Think Big. So um, there were some uh, core team members there. So and we talked a little bit about, about uh, the idea. Um, some are here. Joran is here. Brian, Brian was not <coughs> there. Um, I don't know where one where was uh, also there. So, but we built a, a small team, uh, Hank van Kang. Hank, are you here? I saw him. Ah, there. We built a small team, a small team and, and we, we sought some things out, out and we discussed with the, um, uh, with the core team. And actually, it was <coughs> not so easy. So, um, we, we both, Hank and I, we had a, we had a really good idea or, or a detailed idea what we will do, and how it has, how it looks like, and and what should happen, what we must do. So um, we uh, we we write it, um, some rules, um, discuss this, and uh, said so. That's our rule. That's our rules. So. Um, Core team follow or follow not. So, and we can also be a little bit stubborn, so that was the deal. Um, I think anyone knows it, what happened. They didn't follow, party was over. And um, then it takes, it's a Mac. You have to do it. So, um, I really don't know what was internally discussed, so, um, but from the outside, nothing really happened. I saw a really long sleep, and uh, it, nothing goes forward with, with this uh, uh, international idea. So, then we are in 2009. German Joomla Day. Um, we have two uh, non-profit organizations in Germany for, for, supporting, for supporting Joomla. Uh, one is Mambo e.V. And uh, we named it in Joomla Supporters Club and we, uh, with this idea to, to make it a little bit more international. And, and uh, um, I got a hint from an from, uh, from attendee on, on the German Joomla Day, and uh, he said, um, look at the William Kempf House. It's a cheap location. And, and I called this location, and it was really cheap. So I booked. So, um, and um, we decided to do it. That was, I think, the. Um, important part. So then we, we um, had to do a team building, so, and we found uh, a nice place 
and all together as a whole, we, um, we are friendly welcomed and we built a team, uh, had ideas and um, so everything goes forward. So, but also we, we uh, informed the project and the OSM about our plans. So um, three years later, other people were there uh, and uh, things changed. So, but the first replies on, on our emails, it was not really, really support. We, we got some answer, uh, we got what, uh, answers about uh, questions we, we uh, never asked. And uh, at the moment, I think it's, it's also a little bit uneasiness about this conference, but it's, it's up to you to, to show how we support the project and uh, what this conference can do for the project. So, and uh, I hope we have a positive impact to the Joomla project. So, it was 2006, we failed, so, and only three, d three years later, we had success with this conference, and we are all here. So, we are, at the moment, not really 187, but we are 27 people from 27 different countries here, so it's really international. So we have a lot of developers, designers, we have co-founders here, we have leader, look, people from leadership teams and, and many, many. So, and we all, and I think, I hope, we all love Joomla. So, um, that's my wish. Let us make this conference really a success. So, and uh, I have learned in six months doing or uh, preparing this conference is when you always stay positive, be friendly, focus on your, on your goal, um, never can really stop you doing good things. So, and um, it's, it's not, not only for, uh, from me as, as uh, organizer or, or main organization contact uh, from this conference, of this conference, uh, also as, as OSM board member, I think we, um, community cannot really build, so it grown, so, and uh, the only thing what we have to do is support it. So, and, what should I say? Have fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I think we need a little, little. Uh... Good morning, everyone. Um. Yeah, this is the title of my presentation today. User experience thinking. Um, first of all, I'm really honored to be here. Um, and I'd like to thank, to thank uh, Brian, Robert, where is everyone? <laughs> yeah. Um, for inviting me for this um, J and Beyond. Um, just a quick question, just to set the tone of my presentation. Can you raise your hands if you are a developer? Okay. Designer? Okay. Business people? <laughs> and uh, if you do a little bit of everything, Ah, that's good, that's good, that's good. <laughs> okay, I will try to be very generic, but at the same time, I can't really talk about anything too techy about Joomla because I haven't done any Joomla work 
for the last probably three, four years. So we should be all right. Um, I might have the same problem as Robert. Oh, oh yes. Igor Dutra, who am I? Um, okay, nowadays I am um, an user experience architect, information architect, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm also a father, and my previous experience was a mix of PM, developer, designer, probably most about the same of you guys. Um, um, I'm not a coder, I'm not a developer. I probably can read code, I can understand code, but I can't do any code myself from scratch. Um, so these days, what I'm doing, I am a freelancer. I, I am a consultant. And I'm probably in, in the dark side of the, uh, how can I say, uh, expensive CMSs and uh, complicated and political environments, corporate environments. So I'm in the other side now. Um, basically, um, well, I am Brazilian. I am based in London, and I work for many agencies and, and clients over there. Uh, at the moment, I'm working for Vodafone, um, but I've done a lot of work for VW, uh, Shell, what other names? Uh, Nordic guys probably know Yara and SEA, um, Toyota, Vauxhall, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I also did my master's at uh, Scotland, and I spoke in the first uh, Jumala Day UK and also in the first Jumala Day Brazil about Porsche Brazil. That's probably the product you guys all know. So I will try to not talk a lot about Porsche Brazil, but I will eventually. <laughs> yeah, Jumala in my life. Well, my life pre-Mambo and pre-Joomla was basically, I was a designer, I was a PM, and I was building websites, sometimes alone, sometimes with a team. Um, we had pure HTML websites. We also tried to build some uh, CMSs ourselves. It was very, very time consuming. Um, it was a nightmare. And then, in 2003, I'm, I met Mumbo. And for me, my first impression was so easy. So I created my first Mumbo website in probably one hour. Uh, and I was really excited about it and the possibilities. Uh, so, we did the first version of the Porsche Brazil website, which was fully customized, Mambo, uh, really, really hard to update. Um, and then, when Joomla came out, we also have the second version of Porsche uh, website, which was more interesting. We spent a lot of time planning it. Um, uh, also United Nations, uh, Regional Information Center, um, and a few others. And then, <laughs> when I moved to UK, Joomla simply disappeared of my life because no one there actually uses Joomla, at least not in, in the commercial, commercial environment agencies, etc. So it was quite a, a different environment for me. Um, however, these days, I, I was involved in a couple open source projects as well. 
some with um, Drupal, uh, Concrete 5, Magnolia. But in general, my, 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 my impression is it's, it's quite hard to sell open source for big corporates and even for agencies, at least in the UK. Um, oh, oh, there's something else here. Um, so something probably a bit selfish is when I needed Joomla, Joomla was there. Um, I didn't know any CMS. It was really, really hard for me to get involved with expensive CMSs. And then, when I got involved with other bigger projects, I simply dumped Joomla. And as I said, it's a, it's a bit selfish. Uh, but at the same time, I, I, I owe a lot of my expertise and my knowledge to Joomla because basics of any CMS, is, everything is basically the same. And um, I can sell to my clients that I'm a CMS expert probably because of Joomla. Um, yeah, and yes, I'm much less geek uh, nowadays than I was before. Um, it was something that I had to learn. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much about me. And as I said before, I miss this sense of community, friendship, and uh, people not competing against each other. And I can dress like that, and everybody's fine with that. So <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm really glad to be here. <laughs> so let's start talking about users. Yeah, that's, that's the person who's always there complaining about our work. They, they say our websites don't work. They say they don't understand. They say our app website is ugly, it's slow. So they are always complaining. Um, and our goal as web professionals is to provide the best user experience as possible to these guys because it's not their fault <laughs> that they don't understand all our websites. Basically, it's our fault. And uh, we have control over that. So the way, for me, the way I do, and most user experience architects, they do, they follow a process uh, that you have to understand business goals, you have to understand user goals, then you make your recommendations and you test and you test and you test and there are many iterations until you get the requirements and the specifications right. And then you go uh, for development. Uh, and sometimes it's this, this part is much more complicated and more time consuming than the development uh, itself. And for me now, working with these uh, big uh, corporates, it's, it's probably 60, 70% 70, 70 of my time uh, running workshops, convincing people, and writing documentation. Um, and yeah, all the stakeholders, they want different things. Your client wants to sell something your user doesn't want to buy it, but he, 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 he doesn't know he uh, or she doesn't want to buy it until we get involved and we make them think they want to buy something, for instance. Um, techies, 
think everything is too complicated, everything is going to take ages to do, and uh, part of my job is to convince everyone um, that everything is possible. Um, so I have one little example from Porsche. Uh, this is the, the form, I call this this uh, 200 pound, well, I'm thinking in pounds, um, uh, the 200 pound user experience project we have uh, for um, Porsche Brazil. So basically, this is a form uh, that you can access directly and you can enter your news article from this form and, uh, and save directly to the database. Very, very simple, but the problem was Okay, this is basically for the press re releases for Porsche, and this is the, the form for the journalists to enter uh, the news articles. The problem was, when we were about to launch uh, the second version of Porsche Brazil website, there, was, there were no new, uh, news articles published. And so I asked myself, what's, what's going on? So. I spoke with the developers, and they say, everything is working. Just need to log in into the Joomla admin and uh, um, create a new uh, news article, and that's it. OK, that's fine. It's working. Um, Porsche, the client, they said, I don't care what needs to be done. I just want the press releases uh, live. Fine. And when I spoke with the journalists, they said, you know what, it's too complicated. We don't want to log into the system, then go to the navigation and add a new article and select a drop-down, blah, 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 blah. We just want a simple form that we can copy and paste from Word. I said, ah, that's it. So um, I managed to convince the agency, and because it, the agency didn't want to spend any resources on that. Uh, and in the end, we created this simple form for probably about 200 pounds. And all the, I don't know, probably 50, 100 news articles were published within the same day. So it was a big success. We didn't, want, we, we didn't need to spend any time training people. Client was happy, agency was happy, developers were happy. So that was a very, very simple approach. But just by talking to people who is involved in the project, you can understand a lot of things. Um, so that's my example. And it's very important to focus on the results, because you don't do this just for the sake of it. Yeah, this is from Google. Focus on the user and all else will follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we simplify things. And as I said before, simplify sometimes is much more complicated than it seems. Um, for instance, what I'm working now, which is basically form design, uh, we have 130 pages of technical documentation. My job is basically two, two forms, and it seems really, really, really complicated because we are dealing with millions of pounds. Uh, this one is for Vodafone. And actually, for the user, the, the user doesn't, doesn't need to know that. The user doesn't... doesn't it's, 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 we need to make things simple, and we need to think about the user who's behind the screen. Ah, yes. My favorite topic. Ah, uh, yes. Um, so, talking about simplicity, 
iPhone versus Android. I do have one of those Android phones, and I tried really, really hard to like it, but I hate it. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and then, I, I used to be an, an iPhone user, and for me, you think, okay, that's Android is Google, it's supposed to be fast, it's supposed to be simple, but it's not. I think it's about the freedom that Android has, so people can modify um, the OS, companies can customize the interface, but for instance, I, I had to, uh, to set up the Portuguese dictionary and Portuguese keyboard, I spent probably five hours trying to find how to do that in uh, Android forums, and it was impossible. So I, I still can't type anything in Portuguese because it doesn't have a Portuguese keyboard and uh, dictionary. But if they told me that up front, I would simply not I would simply bother to, to spend five hours of my time doing that. I would stay with my kid. It's much more fun. So the um, question is, how, how much the openness of Android interfere with the user experience and how much uh, the full control of the operating system from Apple interferes with the user experience. And it's, 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 it's a, such a big gap. And you think, yeah, Apple is evil, 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 evil. <laughs> Even. And actually, they, they are not. They, they, they provide the best phone, the best operating system. Um, um, and <laughs> that's a funny thing I, I put in my notes. If you have all the money in your hands, like Microsoft, um, you won't be able, simply with money, um, to create the best operating system if you don't understand users. So, yeah, I have my next slide about that one. I was reading, actually listening to this uh, free book from uh, Chris Anderson, and has this quote, at some point in your life you will realize that time is more important than money. And yes, if you think about the five hours I spent trying to find a way to set up a Portuguese keyboard in my phone, definitely I would rather pay five dollars to someone to do that for me. And it's the same for the users. Why do they need to spend time figuring out how your website works? It's not their fault if they don't understand. Uh, and you can save a lot of time if you understand them beforehand. Um, <laughs> there's another thing. Um, I was trying to get involved with Joomla again a couple months ago in this uh, user experience uh, effort. So I spoke with Brian, I think, and said, you know, yeah, there's someone working in this uh, uh, topic in one of the forums. OK, how can I help? Uh, you can start by reading um, uh, this thread. And then when I opened the link, there was probably 20 pages of discussion. And I simply didn't have time to go through all the um, 
all the topics, all, all, all the threads. So for me, the, again, <laughs> time is much more important these days. And it's something to, to bear in mind when you are designing or when you are developing. It's whether or not the users are going to spend time on your website. Um, and yes, it's all about results, as, as I said before. There's no point of going through um, user experience process to create documentation, to run workshops, if you don't have a purpose. So you do all of that, you talk to your users, you talk to your client, you spend hours and hours and hours because you are going to make more business. That's fact. And, um, and you are going to create products that people want and need. And you can also define uh, measurable results you can improve uh, relationships between you and your client, you and your user. Therefore, you can have repeat business and uh, enhanced reputation. So it's very, very, very straightforward. It's all about money in the end. Um, and there's something yeah, innovation. I, I used to say, what we do is 95% uh, consistency, uh, best practice, design patterns, or whatever you want to call it, but it's just to make everything consistent. And the other 5% is the, the interesting bit, because that's why, where you can, we, we can make a difference. That's where we can do our innovation bit. And just this thing about consistency. Um, a few months ago, I did work for one of the biggest uh, UK banks. And each department, so business, insurance, mortgages, et cetera, et cetera, is run by a different person and a different team. And each one do things the way they think is right and for the user. So if I am insur an insurance consumer, um, it's the, the, the whole experience is completely different from my bank account. And then you don't understand how it works. You don't understand what you have to do. And just by doing things consistently, um, users are much more, uh, they, they are more likely to use your website and complain less. Um, yes, I have something about the 5% innovation. Again, from Porsche. This is, Brian asked me, other day uh, about this uh, Porsche editor. And he mentioned <laughs> that was really, really similar to K2 or the other new components. But basically, our idea is you have different page layouts, but they are part of the same, um, the same template. But we didn't have the ability to change this uh, sub template. So we decided to create a JavaScript editor to, to manage that, and then you have different fields for different page layouts. So it was a very basic approach to what you guys are doing at the moment, but I can say this is a little bit of our 5% innovation. We did something which were not supported, 
in a different way. Um, and there are some DIY user experience, things that you can do um, yourself, very, very cheap and very, very easy. So, and we do in such a thorough way for big projects, but it doesn't need to be like that. You don't have to write 150 pages of documentation. Um, so, in terms of uh, research and in terms of understand what your clients and what your users want, um, you can simply buy, you can simply go and talk to them. You can run um, uh, online uh, surveys. You can use a survey monkey or something else. Um, <laughs> we did something again for a bank a long, long time ago. Uh, a technique called um, shadowing. Basically, you spend your day following someone. In this case, uh, was uh, uh, financial brokers. So my job was to follow them, spend a whole day just watching and making notes. And it uh, was really, really interesting because then you understand what the, your user uh, does in the context. Uh, and this is cheap, again. Um, um, yeah, in terms of documentation, which is the recommendations you, you do, there are a number of uh, uh, wireframe tools, uh, online uh, site mapping uh, tools. You can even use uh, spreadsheets, very simple spreadsheets, uh, to create site maps or uh, content audits. And uh, in terms of testing, uh, there are also a number of tools. Um, Clicktail, do you guys know Clicktail? Mm -mm. Yeah. Uh, basically, you can record the sessions and then you can watch the sessions later on. Um, and without, basically you add a code in your template and then you can play the sessions. Um, and you can identify many, many things uh, but just by watching some of them. Um, also, Crazy Egg, uh, screen recording. So there are a number of things that you guys can do very, very cheaply. And this is my last one. Um, just some final thoughts. The less formal you do, uh, your approach. So the less formal you do your interviews, your workshops, the more authentic feedback you have. Because people don't, get, don't have to be prepared. They, they, they don't have to, to be polite. So just ask for a pizza, and then you can have a chat together, coffee. Sometimes it's much, much more useful than a proper uh, workshop session. Yes, big companies, uh, big budgets, many bosses. That's difficult to approve. It's difficult to get your ideas across. And you guys have such a big opportunity of doing things differently um, because you don't have to go through this um, painful sign-off process that you have to get approval from 20, 30 different people. So basically you are more likely to change the world than I am, which is a very, very good thing. Um, and last um, thought is think about the person who's behind the screen. Think about your user when you are developing, when you are designing, because they are probably the most important person that you, for you. They will generate more business, they will give you the feedback. So think about them, and think about them during all the 
uh, Jane and Beyond uh, presentations as well, think about, okay, we are creating this component for who? How would the user use my software? And so on. So it's, 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 it's a good um, exercise. And um, yep, basically, everyone can do a little bit of my work. I just do my work full time. That's, I have more time. And that's it. Thank you very much. And um, if you have any questions, just drop me an email and ask now. Thank you, thank you.